Okay, this is my uh, instructional video for factoring polynomials, and the one method we're going to talk about in this video is finding the GCF, or the greatest common factor. So, here it is. The greatest common factor, that's the factor, the one and only factor that's common to every term in the polynomial, and it's the greatest. Okay, so... The largest thing, the most factors that are all common to every term, that's the GCF. And it doesn't matter if your polynomial is a short two-term polynomial, a binomial, or it's a 15-term polynomial. It's common to everybody. So if any term is missing it, then that factor is not common. That's the key. Okay? And here's the deal. Our factoring methods depend on, on how many terms the polynomial has. The GCF, that's universal. doesn't matter how many terms, so we always do that first. And a lot of times you'll get a polynomial like a binomial that doesn't look like it's factorable as a difference of squares, but once you take out the greatest common factor, then you find out, oh, what's remaining? That binomial is factorable. It is a difference of squares. So here we go. First example, 3x cubed plus x. Now, a lot of people look at that and say, wow, I see x is common. If that's you, good on you. Okay, but here's the deal. Some people don't see that. So, the way to do this, so if you're looking for the GCF and you just don't see it, then take each term in the polynomial, like 3x to the third, and factor it out into primes. So, 3 times x times x times x. And then x is pretty much prime, so x is x. And then identify the common, see so if you factor it into primes, it's very obvious what's common. There's an x here and an x in that term. So, the greatest common factor is x. So then you say, okay, so you pull the x out, so that's the guy I have out here is the x, and then this tells you what's left. Now, this is jacked up because I did not do that correctly. Let me switch this to blue. So we take the x out, and then here's what's left. 3 times x times x, so the first term is 3x squared. And in the second term, there's nothing left, which means that's the assumed one that every, that's a factor for everybody. So then you go plus 1. So unintentionally here, when I did this last night and made these slides, I screwed that up. And there, here's how you know, because when you multiply in back, you should get this expression over here. Okay, so x times 3x squared is 3x to the third, so that gets me the first term. But there's no way to get the second term with just the 3x squared here. And here's the deal. If I have a binomial here and I take out something common, that what's left has to be a binomial. So, because one term times two terms has to give me two terms. If you have one term times one term, that's only going to give you one term, and there's no way. Okay, so. And then I look at this binomial here, and it's prime. Because the only way to factor a binomial which has nothing common is a difference of squares, and this is not that. So there we go. That's done. So factoring each term, that's the key. And then you identify what's common, and the cool thing is it tells you what's left for your, for your uh, remaining binomial. There we go. We're on to the next problem. Example B. So negative 14 g to the third, h to the third. So negative 14 is negative 1 times 14, which is 2 times 7. G to the third is three G's multiplied. H to the third is three H's being multiplied. Second term, negative 14 G squared H. So again, negative 14 is negative one times 14, which is two times seven. G squared is G times G, and then we have just a lonely H there. Now we're ready to identify what's common. So negative one is common, two is common, seven is common, three G's up here, two down there, so two G's are common. And then three H's up here, one H there, 1h is common. Boom. There we go. So, what's common is negative 1 times 2 times 7. That's negative 14. And then g and g. So, g squared is common. And then h to the first is common. And here's what remains. g times h times h. So that's gh squared, or you could say 1gh squared. That's the assumed coefficient there. And here, nothing's left, so we have that assumed 1 again. So boom. And when you multiply it back, it makes this guy. So negative 14 times 1 is negative 14. g to the second times g to the first is g to the third. h times h squared is h to the third. 
And for the second term, 1 times this guy here is that guy, negative 14g squared h. Negative 14g squared h right up there in the problem statement. There we go. Problem number 2, finished, baby. Problem number three. Oh, a little bit longer. Bigger numbers, kind of scary looking. But okay, we're going to take it anyways, because that's the kind of math students we are. So negative 42, a to the third, b to the fourth, x to the fifth. So negative 42 is negative 1 times 42. 42 is 6 times 7, so 2 times 3. There's your 6, and then the 7. So there we are on primes. a to the third is 3as. b to the fourth is 4bs multiplied. x to the fifth is 5xs. The variables are always easy. The hard part for most kids is identifying the right coefficient that's common, believe it or not. You think that would be the easiest, but not really. Okay, negative 56. So that's going to be negative 1 times 56, which is 8 times 7. So 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. That is factored into primes, and then 7. And then we have a to the third and x to the fourth. Negative 168. Okay, so this one's going to be fun. So negative 1. And then 168 is 2 times a uh, half of 168 is going to be 84. So there's my 2. And then 84 is going to be 4 times 21, it looks like. And that 4 is 2 times 2, factored into primes. Oh, wait a second here. 168. So 2 times 84. 84 is 4 times 21. Yep. So there's going to be three twos. I got too many twos here. So it's going to be three twos. That's uh, two times four is eight times twenty-one, which is three times seven. And then we have a to the second, b to the second, x to the second. Now we're ready to identify what's common. So I'm going to go back to my highlighter here. There we go, Mr. Highlighter. So obviously negative one is common. So one two is common. Uh, three's not common. There's no three here, but seven's common. And then for A's, we have three here, three there, two there. So the lowest number is what's common. So two's common. Told you the variables are easy. B's. We got B to the fourth, no B here, B to the second, so there's no B common, because second term has no B's. And X, we have X to the fifth, X to the fourth, X to the second, so the two X's are common. So we have negative 2 times 7, that's negative 14, uh, a squared, and then x squared. That's our common factor. And then what's left? Switch back to my pen here. So we have 3, a, b to the fourth, and then x to the third. There we go. 3, a, b to the fourth, x to the third. Second term, we have 4, a, x squared. 4, a, x squared. Third term, we have 2 times 2, which is 4, times 3, which is 12. So this should be 12, so we're going to scratch this out. I'll pick my blue marker up, and we're going to go 12, b to the second. And that actually makes sense, because 14 times 24, hey, just the 10 times 20 is over 200 already, or is 200, and this is 168, so that's ridiculously big. And 14 times 12, 12 times 12 is 144, so 14 times 12, a little more than 144, 168. That sounds reasonable. I'm kind of, kind of feeling that one. And there we go. Boom. I think this is the last example. Let me check. Uh, yes, it is. So here we go. We've got a four-term polynomial here. So we're going to factor that. So negative 18, negative 1 times 2 times 3 times 3, right? And then a squared, and then b to the third. Negative 6, which is negative 1 times 2 times 3. And then a squared and b to the first. And then the third term is 12, which is 2 times 6, which is 2 times 3. So 2 times 2 times 3. a to the third, b to the third. And 24, which is just uh, 12, 2 times 2 times 3, right? Times another 2. Boom, there's 24. a to the second, b to the second. We're ready to identify what's common. So negative 1 is not common. Looks like 1, 2 is common. And that's it, because there's only 1, 2 here, 1, 2 there. 3, looks like 3 is common. And there's our, there's our um, 
coefficient. So we're going to get uh, 2 times 3 is 6. And then a's. We've got 2 a's, 2 a's, 3 a's, and 2 a's. So the lowest number is 2. So that's what's common. And for the b's, we have b to the third, b to the first, b to the third, b to the second. So b to the first is common. So 1b. Okay. We are ready to rock and roll at this point. So, hey, what's common? What's highlighted here? 2 times 3, which is 6, a squared b. So there's my 6a squared b. Go back to the gray here. 6a squared b. And then what's left in the first term? Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. b times b is b squared. Boom. And then negative 1 on the second term. And then 2 times a times b squared. So 2ab squared on the third term. And 2 times 2 is 4 times b on the last term, 4b. And there you go. That's it. Pretty sure there's nothing below that. Nope, I already checked. This is the last slide. There is factoring out the GCF. And most of those are more complicated than what we're going to do. So I hope this is helpful for you. If not, I'm thinking you should come in for tutoring. Come check me out like before school, lunchtime, or after school. Ciao, baby.